Hi, uh, my name is Ahong, and uh, I want to share with you uh, my thoughts about cooking. Okay, people always ask me, when do you start cooking? The answer is, I don't remember. Thank you. <laughs> Thing is, I don't remember. Uh, I only know I started cooking when my mother stopped cooking for me. So it's as simple as that. So my beginning in this uh, cooking career is a humble one. It came from the need to feed myself. So I, I saw food as a uh, fuel. But I was lucky enough that I did this when I was studying overseas. So uh, great ingredients were easily accessible. So it wasn't long before uh, I decided I am Jamie Oliver. You know, I see a tomato, I go, oh! I see like a steak, and, oh, so steam. Everything I want to touch, everything I want to, uh, every day wake up, I roll pasta, like, oh, I'm so Italian. Then, uh, I really got bored of it. Lah. After that, I started to think, uh, maybe, you know, I'm that good. Uh, I can be a, a, a Gordon Ramsay. I can be Marco P. White. I can win a Michelin star. I buy their books. I spend all my money on their books. I copy their dishes without knowing why. You know, it says 61.5 degree, I poach the chicken or poach the egg. Okay, I do it this way. I, I copy everything, plate everything nice, take picture, take selfie, show everyone I'm great. Okay? So, uh, I finished up my studies over there, I studied architecture, and I graduated. I spent all my money buying books and uh, expensive frying pan, so I came back here. And I thought, you know, I'm a champion. I'm quite powerful. People don't know what I know. People don't, haven't seen what I've seen. So I joined a few cooking competitions, uh, local cooking competition, competitions, and I fought aunties and uh, your grandma and your uh, mother-in-law. And I got, I got mashed. I got mashed. I got creamed. You never seen how the aunties cook, you know? You never seen it before. And uh, my ego was destroyed. But I didn't learn my lesson. I still think, oh, it's unfair, it's unfair, it's everyone's fault. It's the ingredients, they didn't give me the correct ingredients, they couldn't give me French truffles, they couldn't give me French butter. You know, everything I, I want to cook from France, please import it. So I opened a little uh, food court unit and I started selling uh, Western food. And uh, that one is a real game changer. When you put your money where your mouth is, you really have to open your eyes. And uh, it turned me from feeding myself and my friends into someone who have to, for a job, feed other people, feed strangers and feed paying customers. And that's when I started seeing that all this while I've been cooking blindly, without thinking. So that's when I started thinking about food. To a certain degree, there's a level of cooking which is beyond cover magazines, beyond blogs, beyond trends, and beyond hype. You know, there's no accident that we have two chefs here, two judges from the French tradition. Why? Why are the French gast gastronomy so highly regarded? Because, you know, a hundred years ago, a man, named, uh, a man named Escoffier changed French cooking. He took home cooking and turned cooks into a profession, you know? He cared for his uh, workers' welfare. He introduced kitchen hygiene. He made them wear hats. He made them wear handkerchief on the neck so that their sweat don't drop into the food. And of course, you know, after that, uh, another man, uh, Ferdinand Point, I, I think this is arguable, he went to Japan. He saw the simplicity there and he saw how Japanese people presented their food in such a detailed way, in such a simple and yet complex way. And so he took this idea back and it became Nouvelle Cuisine. This Nouvelle Cuisine uh, demands simplicity, demands flat freshness, demands honesty. And this is a type of food that you see now being served by chefs all over the world. Okay? And, uh, but even thinking about all that is not enough to survive in Malaysia. When I see a cook like Chef Wan, I don't really care if he talks a lot, or he mocks people, or he moves very fast. I don't really care about that. What I feel is jealousy. Because I'm jealous of his encyclopedic information, encyclopedic mind of the Malaysian cooking. I mean, we young cooks, we are very rajin. Every day, we go to the supplier, we find the best truffle, we find the best steak. We ask the supplier, how can I import this, how can I import that? But has anyone been bothered to go around looking for the best chili? Has anyone been around looking for the best 
black pepper, best rice, best, you know, petai. For me, petai is like truffle. So, this is what I think about cooking nowadays. And when I see young, young cooks like Chef Liang, he is the new dimension of cooking. You know, when I see people like KY, they are the new dimension of cooking. There is another layer added to cooking nowadays. You are being judged, you are being presented to the world. What you do is instantly spread around. You know, and people care about how you look, what you say, and what you put on your plate. So, you know, I've done polishing shoe. One, two, three, four, five. Polish, polish, polish. Very shiny. Okay? Okay. Right. Let's get down to cooking. Okay. <laughs> we sh when you go on television, you know, you need to work, not just talk and talk and talk. We chef, we chef, we chef. And tell so, the story about your father too much as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm serving you uh, 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 a version of my ayam pechek. Uh, I like this sauce because this is a Kelantanese ayam pechek. The Kelantanese ayam pechek, I, do, I don't think they to miss it. So they don't saute it to the point where the oil breaks. For me, this is a bit uh, nouvelle. So the sauce is kept fresh. It's just because uh, of a slow simmering of onion, uh, shallot, uh, ginger, galangal, and lime, uh, lemongrass, okay? So be generous with the sauce. This is Malaysia. You know, that day I was asked, why do you put so much sauce on your plate? And because there's a saying in Malay, di mana tumpa kuah kalau bukan ke atas nasi. So kuah. It's very important here, you know. To a certain degree, I am acting a bit French, but I am trying to do what Malaysians do. Next, I'm serving kacang panjang with uh, chicken offal. So I kill the chicken, so I must eat everything. Okay. I believe in eating everything. And I believe the best cut of chicken is actually gizzard, the liver, and the heart. You know, chicken breast don't actually taste well, of chicken. Okay, okay, and then uh, I've got here the chicken now. Uh, technically, this is roasted chicken, but I'm not uh, using the oven today because I don't want to risk it. It'll definitely dry out. Although, after we waited for so long for Chef Wan, it's dried out anyway. <laughs> so, this is a, a, a chicken breast that I poach in the palm oil until 65C, okay? Uh, this is a very modern way of cooking. Some people might say it's a bit dangerous. Uh, who cares? This is my show. There you go. <laughs> okay, chicken breast that I poach in the palm oil and uh, petai. Okay? So I uh, debone the chicken thigh and drumstick and I pan fry skin down uh, 18 minutes so that the skin gets crispy. Okay, there you go. I took out the skin and uh, put it on two sheets of uh, baking paper, stick it in the oven, roast it for 45 minutes. Because the problem with roast chicken, when you serve it in a restaurant, it always gets soggy. So this way, you get to keep the crispy chicken skin. And I like the shape. It's kind of natural. This is two breasts. Okay? I'm serving uh, this uh, ayam pechek with uh, nasi ulam, okay? It's basically rice, uh, and, uh, ikan bilis, udang kering that you fry, you pound it, and you mix it into the rice with the ulam of the day. So today I was given ulam raja, serai, and uh, uh, a bit of uh, uh, daun kesong, okay? So whatever's available, you mix it in, just like your mother did. Last but not least, uh, I've got some shallots. For the garnish, we always try to reinforce the idea that you had in the beginning. So this sauce is mainly shallots. So uh, these are some shallots that I, I uh, pickled in uh, the simple vinegar and sugar. Okay, just sprinkle it around. A little bit of lime. And for me, I don't buy truffle. I always cheat my customer. 
I tell them it's truffle but it's Pad Thai. <laughs> don't, you don't believe me, you can try this at home. Uh, to be honest, how many, how, many have you, how many of you are sure how a truffle smells like? I mean, trust me, it smells like Pattai. <laughs> it's true. Okay, there you go. Uh, this is my version of uh, Ayam Pechik, but I'm not... Yeah. Okay. I was wondering what is it? Yes. Uh, so have a bite. We eat them raw as well sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just have a bite. Please do one. Better than Rafael. You see? Uh, so, uh, like my mother always say, uh, if you wait for the food, it's going to be good. The food wait for you, it's going to be shit. So you all wait here. Huh? Huh? Thank you. Thank you. You know, sometimes when it comes to a dish, it really reflects the characteristic of a person. I think this is a, a classic example of that. I think this dish actually reflects you. And it has a lot of robust flavours and uh, a lot of honesty, I believe in it. And I think that shows also in your presentation as well. But if I wanted to critique, like I mentioned this to the previous contestants, uh, this is a, a, a presentation a demonstration of, of uh, not just a cooking skill, but um, how do you relate this recipe to the audience? Huh? And um, I would have loved to see a little bit more of your cooking skill um, that you demonstrated in your first video that you submitted. Um, I noticed that you were very good with the knife, with the chicken. And, and um, that would have been a lot better to actually show a little bit of that. So there's at least something that can capture Oh, you mean during the presentation just yes. now? During the yes. presentation. Oh, okay. Okay. I love the, the total flavor of what I'm eating now. Obviously, you know exactly how it's supposed to taste. There's a lot of people sometimes who cook the dish, especially coming from another, uh, what you call it, ethnicity. You might not quite get it right, you know? So this is nice. You got that in terms of the sweetness, because per and all that, you know? Uh, but of course, I was watching you from behind there, and um, and I think the first thing that I noticed that not only you are like you know very comfortable in what uh, you do, uh, obviously from the time I know you, it's like whatever lah, like, you know, and you go in and you you know you you have that that persona, you have that wonderful personality. Um, I like that. I like that because you know why uh, in the entertainment world. What really sells is um, is also the personality. Yeah? No matter which way you want to turn, at times you can even be a lousy cook. To be honest with you, which I have seen many, yeah, who are not professionally trained and they think, you know, but because they got the personality and they go like, Ugh, like they squeeze the lemon like Nigel, like, Ugh, you know, and all that. You know, for all you know, she can be strings of all these home economists doing things for them. Guess what? You think she does all that? Not really. You think Jamie Oliver does all that? You should see the team that working behind now and making money for them. So if you really understand the business, maybe I should be your manager. <laughs> now, what I like that is like, you know, you come in and keep, keep that, nah? keep that. And um, fun thing in you, you know, go in. Who knows, you might, might go into television. But you know, I love to produce a program having you behind as a star. Imagine me producing and, and using your personality. Gosh, you know, and I can just like, so you should have been a stand-up comedian to begin with anyway, you know? <laughs> uh, so, the, so I'm telling you here, you know, don't be so worried too much about your, 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 your you know, not enough knowledge thing. Build up, learning. You can go to the Cordon Bleu, come in six months a year and do all these courses, all that. Blah, blah, because it's, we all learn from somewhere like I did when I first started, no? But what is so important is to have that, that confidence, 
you know everything personality because you know many times people ask me what does it takes to be a man at your level chef one when you go out there presenting and you can pull the crowd and people watch you you know and all these sponsors coming after you throwing all these hundred and thousands and millions of of of, of endorsement you know that other chef grinding their teeth and, and and in jealousy and looking like oh i wish i can be like him you know you can you can because you know why you've got that personality so keep that nurture that and then with that what i want you to do in the future is go take up all these courses brush up learn all the fundamental skill of you know the career art, as i have done now and telling uh, the master chef uh, what they call that fadli as you've got the look yeah that, that, that go to the cordon bleu which he went and now he's, he's gone to paris he's gone to whatever and then you know because you know why you want to be someone behind there who understand not just food technical thing everything because you're a lecturer you can be up there stand up comedian you are your historian you know your storyteller you're a chef you're a bushito also can <laughs> uh, because people love to be bushito there who wants to watch a cooking program you know a chef going there like that you know very detailed and you fall asleep no mm -hmm. five minutes spend they sit down they close the tv they get out lah you know bosan so what <laughs> makes people successful is your personality yeah that mm -hmm. shines out there so i'm telling you here with that keep that Go brush up your skill, Raja. It's okay. We all learn. Don't worry about that. You don't know. You don't know. Don't know. And don't tell people all this excuse because they don't know. You know. Uh, you can do all the bullshit thing. You can even get stuff. You know. Down this to so many things. Yeah. You can hire people to do it. I'll tell you the trick sometime. Okay. Okay. All right. So all the best. Thank you, Chef. I also I also like the fact that uh, you gave some historical perspective to some of the things that you were you were saying. Uh, um, I think I think you were probably mm. the only one that that does that. So. I thought it gave a bit of a different dimension that, that is a bit Use broader. That. that was good. I think in terms of what personality, the kind of personality that you have, you stand heads and shoulders above just about every other person that came in here today, which is fabulous because we were looking for that. Um, knowing that you came in second from last kind of helped perk up the rest of the day. Knowing that you produced this a hearty, wholesome meal made it really, really good because I think after all that pretty stuff, knowing that food spoke to my heart, which is pretty much what, what I'm eating right now, that, that, that made my day. It really did. Thank you. And for that, I thank you at home. Thanks, man. Thank you, because me, I know how to uh, impress the truffle by the petai, no? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Save the cost. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef.